Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to lesson number three of computer applications. Uh, today's lesson is going to focus on software and networks. What types of software do we use, and what is a network, and how does it function? Our first left side question today is what are common forms of computer software? And I know you know most of this stuff, but since you all have different levels of knowledge, I'm going to just teach it to you to make sure that we're all in the same place. Uh, there is system software, uh, and these are programs that control the operations of your computer equipment, such as Windows 10, Android, and Yosemite, or the OS X uh, Mac operating systems. Uh, the computer is not built with the system we use to control it. That system is actually software which makes the computer more user friendly for us. For instance, school district computers just went from Windows 7 to Windows 10 and not long before that they were on Windows XP. So our school district runs on a Windows system. Uh, there are school districts that work on a Macintosh system uh, and Yosemite is the newest form of Macintosh operating software. Uh, your phones have an operating system as well, so your phones are always asking you to update your iOS if you have an iPhone. Uh, and candidly, I've only owned an iPhone, so I'm not terribly familiar with Android. Uh, there is also application software. Uh, the most common application software would be word processing, Microsoft Word. Um, that would be the one you use most commonly in a school setting. Um, we also use PowerPoint. Both of those are going to be uh, applications that I teach you how to use in this class. And again, I know some of you are already all over that and some of you are needing a little bit more background on that. Uh, spreadsheets are good for accounting and for structuring and analyzing data. So spreadsheets add, subtract, calculate, um, and do budgeting. So one of the activities I'm going to have you do is make a budget in the class and you're going to have the spreadsheet do the calculations on your budget. Uh, spreadsheet software can also be used to create a database where you can enter, retrieve, and update data. Uh, Access is an example of a program that does that. Um, teachers do that because we keep data on student scores and strengths and weaknesses and areas of improvement. Um, and it takes data to do that, and having that data be organized uh, makes it more effective. And I already mentioned presentation software. Po uh, PowerPoint is the most um, famous example, but there's also something called Prezi, and we may get you into a Prezi before the semester is over. So that's a possibility, possibly coming to a classroom near you. And now we're going to change slides. Our next left side question is, what is important to know about networks? Uh, networks are a wonderful thing, but there are some things you should know about them. Um, because you should also be cautious when sending information over a network. Basically, a network is a collection of computers and devices that are connected together. Um, they're often connected wirelessly, and they're connected by uh, communication devices and transmission media. So at the back of my desktop computer uh, is an ISDN cable, which connects it to the network. And my laptop computer at the front of the classroom um, uses the wireless network, um, which is a school district network. So the school district controls that network and the school district monitors and knows everything that's going across its network. So if, for example, your cell phone is using the school district network, the school district is tracking and has a right to track everything that you transmit using their network. Uh, it allows users to share their resources and it saves a lot of time and a lot of money. Networks have made life very different. We switched slides there in case you didn't notice. Uh, what is the internet and what are the rules of the road on the internet? This is a very important question because there are rules of the road, especially in class, but there are just wise choices you should make when you're using the internet in general. 
First of all, the internet is a worldwide collection of networks that connects millions of businesses, government agencies, educational institutions, and individuals that began in 1969 by something called ARPANET, which was a government agency. Frankly, the internet connects everything and everyone that has access to it. Um, it can be good, it can be bad, it can be neutral. And the internet has not always existed. It started off being a government thing, it evolved to being something that colleges and universities use, and eventually it was released to the public. Um, every business and institution, including school districts, have what's called an acceptable use policy. In other words, what can you do over their networks? and what can't you do over their networks, and what are the consequences if you violate those standards. Um, our school district has an acceptable use policy, um, and that is available to you on the district website. Uh, and we should take a look at that policy in here, uh, because that would be good for you to know. It's a policy prepared by a school district or company that states the rules that are needed to use their computers and their internet connection. So when you are using your cellular devices, your cell phones or your tablets on the district network, you are agreeing to abide by and follow the acceptable use policy. And that same thing happens when you log on at Starbucks or any place that offers you Wi-Fi. They usually make you check a, uh, check a box and hit accept before you continue using their network. Slide change. And then there's this whole concept of the World Wide Web. When you ch check www at the beginning of URL, that stands for World Wide Web. And we are noticing that uh, the www is starting to disappear from those web addresses. Uh, it used to be mandatory. One of the most popular sections of the internet, it was created in August of 1991 by a gentleman by the name of Tim Berners-Lee. The World Wide Web consists of web pages that have text, graphics, audio, video, built-in connections, links, and other things. Pretty much any time you visit a place on the web, you're using the World Wide Web. If you're using the internet, you're on the World Wide Web. Uh, websites are a related collection of web pages. So you go to a website and there's a lot of different links and sublinks that are attached to that main front page, and usually that front page will have a menu um, that is user friendly and allows you to go to different places on that website. You use a web browser to access the websites, and the web browser is supposed to be able to interpret the data that's on the internet, translate it, and make it visually pleasing for you. So. Um, Microsoft has the new Edge browser, which has replaced Internet Explorer. Uh, Google Chrome is extremely popular. Um, Firefox is extremely popular. Um, there's some more um, niche browsers like Opera or SeaMonkey. And then if you use Apple, you're probably very used to using the Safari browser. Uh, it used to be that Internet Explorer controlled the market, but now the I would say Google Chrome um, has definitely uh, snuck its way in there, and people like Firefox quite a bit as well. I bet you know of a browser I didn't list, though. Uh, then there's the Uniform Resource Locator, which is basically the address for any web page. So, for instance, the URL for Waldo is waldomustangs.org, all lowercase. That would be our URL. You could put www in front of it, but you really don't have to. And every web page has a URL, a uniform resource locator. And then there's the hypertext transfer poke protocol called HTTP. That basically is how the data that's on the web is interpreted and presented in your browser. And if there's an S at the end of that, HTTPS, that means that that is a secure website and it is encrypted. So that is the communication standard by which we transfer pages to the web. And I think that might be the end of lesson three. Let's check it. Ah, the web server, that's good to know too. 
that is the computer that delivers the web pages. So the web page is stored on a server somewhere. It's uh, when it's in the cloud. The cloud is a cloud, but there's a concrete physical computer somewhere that's actually storing that information permanently. Uh, and it depends on who owns the website um, to determine where that web server is. All right, we're going to do cyberbullying next time. So that's it for lesson three. Uh, now would be a great time to write a summary for today's lesson and to ask any clarifying questions uh, that you may have about what we've learned today. Lesson four will be on cyberbullying, and that's going to be a separate test, kids. Thank you for listening to today's lesson.